Alright, what's up? This is King David, David and Goliath Music, BeatClass.com, DNG Music Online.com, MasterMyBeat.com, Guadiaco. Okay, so I'm here because uh, there is an old school technique called tracking, and I want to introduce you to it. So if you look here at my cork track, and I have, um, I don't know, thousands, okay, hundreds of these floppy disks filled with thousands of beats, songs that I did from way back in 2001, uh, and they have been archived, and so I've got a lot of stuff that I was digging through, and I find sometimes little beats and stuff that I like, so here's one of them. So, what I want to do now is I want to export this into FL Studio over here, okay? And I'm going to use a method, an old school method called tracking. What I'm going to do is take each track from this Korg Triton, and the Korg Triton gives me 16 tracks of production, all right? And I'm going to singularly track each one into FL Studio. So what I'll have end up with is as many, many tracks that I have here, over exported into FL Studio, but the, the benefit of it is then I can go ahead and separately change the volumes, the levels, the EQ, the effects and everything to make a much bigger or blown up track, right? And then I can go ahead and do my production as usual in FL Studio. So we're going to do that one track at a time. I'm going to try and show you how to, how to do it. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have a Korg Triton. Maybe you have an, you know, another keyboard, uh, maybe a Motif or something like that. Uh, and here's the way I'm doing, I'm doing this without MIDI. So MIDI means uh, musical interface digital, uh, musical instrument diddy digital interface. I'll say it again, musical instrument digital interface, and that's a way of uh, letting different machines speak one language so they can communicate with each other. So in other words, the computer can talk to the keyboard, the keyboard can talk to my effects machine, and so forth. It used to be big and used a lot more often back in the old school studios where we had outboard gear. So the outboard gear had to talk to each other. It had to tell, in other words, the compressor had to tell the reverb when and what measure to bring down uh, volume. Right now we use volume en envelopes, uh, but back in the day everything had to be manually programmed. It was a much more uh, tedious progress. You, you almost wonder how were the beats and the music and the songs done so much better than they are nowadays with all of the things they had to do. But I think what the reason and the answer for that is when you have to actually work for something, you actually put more work into it. When things come easy, we tend to uh, take it for granted, right? It's just a kind of a simple uh, spiritual and psychological principle at work here. So what I try and do is always stay fresh in the old because it makes me that much more appreciative of the new. And this way I'm not taking for granted uh, some of the conveniences that we have come to enjoy in the modern era. All right? So that was just a little diatribe. Now let's get to the tracking of it. All right, so basically I want to go down into my uh, keyboard and I want to solo each track. This is my kit and my snare. All right, and what I want to do is I want to dump just that track into FL Studio using my ASIO, my ASIO driver, okay? Once I've done that, I want to go track by track by track by track. I will end up with separate tracks, um, and they'll be separated in FL Studio, all synced up in timing, and then we can begin our mixing process. So I'm going to do that one by one, and we'll come back just... The, you know, the magic of video will come back where I've already laid that out and we'll talk about how that's done, all right? So for now, let me just first of all uh, do the basics that need to occur in FL Studio. I need to go to Audio Settings, Options, Audio Settings, slide down to uh, M Audio, which is the sound card that I'm using, and plug in that Firewire ASIO driver, ASIO. This allows me to record audio from an external device, whether, whether it be a microphone or keyboard or drum machine and plug that into uh, FL Studio and allow it to record. So now we're all ready to go. Uh, basically what I need to do is match my tempo from the beat that is in here 
Now, if there's any changes I need to make, I can make tempo changes before I go into my recording environment, all right? So, I like it. I'm at 70 BPM. Uh, what I'm going to do is mark it up. I'm going to double time it in FL Studio to 140 BPM. That's twice 70. It will give me some room to add more drums and more sounds in the FL Studio environment and also give me more room to add more intricate patterns. Okay? So I'm going to do that. I'm all set to record uh, in most respects, but what I want to do is come to my insert channel, set it for uh, solo. Uh, it's going to be stereo input, analog one. I'm going to check and make sure I'm getting the signal by hitting play on my sequencer. Sounds like I am. I'm also going to turn back and turn off my, uh, my send from the insert so there's no uh, digital feedback. Play it again. Sounding good. Now I'm going to make sure that my monitoring level is high enough. Alright. And then basically what I'll do is I'll hit record. And as soon as I'm able to record, I'll hit start here. I know it's kind of freehand, it's, it's not, as I said, I'm not using MIDI, so it's not perfect, but that kind of is what's going to make the track sound good, because if it's too perfect, then it's going to sound fake, right? But we don't want anything too fake. We want things to have some kind of flaws in it. It gives it that nice reality feel and that reality sound, all right? All right, so we're going to come back after I've laid all these out, and we're going to start working in FL Studio, all right? Peace, King David, see you in a minute, yeah. King David, David and Goliath Music, BeatClass.com, and I'm back. Uh, so I just finished all my tracking. I got all of the tracks that I had on this particular track right here. I have all of that now moved over to FL Studio. And in FL Studio, now that I have everything tracked out, here's the first thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to select, right-click on every single track. I'm going to select each one. Now I could just be smart about it and go to channels and select all. Uh, but I'm going to do it the hard working, the, the working man's way. How's that? Once I've selected all of them, I'm going to go to now my uh, mixer. I'm going to go to insert channel 2. I'm going to right click on it. And then I'm going to go link selected channel 2 uh, or starting from this track. Bam, I do that. Now all of these have been quickly and very fast, fastly, I think that's a word, assigned to its own FX channel. This is what's going to make my mixing process begin and make it easy. So now, if I look at my screen, uh, which I am doing with my screen capture and not with my camera that's trying to turn towards me, uh, I can now begin to isolate each track. And this is what's cool, because a lot of times in my keyboard, I, I have controls over my audio, but they're hard to control because i got to do a lot of twisting and knobs and all this. And I've gotten so used to that FL Studio environment, I can now make my changes to my sounds a lot more quickly. Uh, not that I can't do it on the keyboard or the Triton. It has the capabilities, but it's a little tedious turning knobs and pressing buttons. So this gives me a little bit uh, easier platform to work for, work on. All right? Uh, here we go. Because God knows I don't work for nobody. Do you guys work for people? I don't work for nobody. Don't work for nobody. Work for yourself. Anyhow, that's a whole nother story, a whole nother tutorial for a whole nother day. How to work for yourself using FL Studio. You want to learn how to do that? I'll, I'll teach you. But you got to go get the $199 package off my website. <laughs> gotcha. All right. So um, now that I have everything separated, I can put some effects. Like that sounds pretty good, but maybe I want to put a small reverb on that. Listen to it. I might want to turn that down a little bit. Now, if 
you all watch my video, it's check it out. Go through my 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 videos. I have a one hour video that teaches how to create the illusion of space using reverb. So this would be a great time to practice all of those skills and techniques that I taught you to make your track sound really full and bounce and have filled filled with uh, dimension uh, using uh, reverb. All right. So I'm going to do a quick mix. All right. And then we'll listen back and see what we got. And uh, that'll be the end of this Tuesday tutorial. We're going to start giving this a name. We'll call it Tuesday Tutorials. Because every Tuesday I drop a, a little tutorial on you guys. All right? So I'm going to come back. I'm going to do my mixing. Come back and we'll listen to it. All right? One love. Stay tuned. Don't go nowhere. King David. Peace. King David back. All right, so we've done our uh, all of our track, and we got every track one by one into FL Studio using the Ozio driver. And now, what we're going to do is compare the two. Now the mixes are going to be different. I added some different effects on the mix here, uh, some stereo panning to make it a little bit wider than it originally was, and we're going to see which one stands the test. Is that cool with y'all? Alright, let's go. Here's the original. Alright, and here is the track version. of tracking started back when we used two inch reel in studios. Um, those producers from back in the days, in the 80s and the 90s, you remember this process. Okay, we took our instruments, our keyboards, our drum machines, and we tracked out every track. Uh, we had only a certain amount of room on those 24 track two inch reels, so we had to track one track at a time onto those two inch reels, and then we um, laid our vocals. So you have to be really, really creative in order to get all of your ideas down onto these 24 tracks. We were very limited. Now we have unlimited digital tracking, so we don't have to do that. But I'm using that old technique today uh, so that I can pull tracks that came from my... Wow, my, my camera person just, just got weak arm and quit it on me. This is really bad. Okay, no problem. So, these floppy disks um, back from 2000 uh, house so much music that now when I'm digging through them, I'm finding things that I like, such as this track. And instead of just dumping everything onto the digital domain, I'm using the tracking process to make it uh, the track come back alive and it sound like its original form. All right? So give it a shot. It's called Tracking. Uh, you can investigate it, how it was done. There are still studios that use this process. If you ever get a chance to, to be in on a session or be part of it, it's something you must learn. It will improve your, uh, your knowledge as a producer, your skill, and your understanding of audio. And this is what we should strive for so we don't get too lazy relying on the new process. All right? One love, King David. David and Goliath Music. Remember to rate. Remember to comment. Remember to subscribe. Remember to laugh. Remember to kiss a baby once in a while. All right? Uh, it's been fun. Peace.